Hey everyone, welcome back again to the channel. In today's video, we are going to start to explore the fish shell or the friendly interactive shell. The fish shell is an alternative shell and it comes pre-installed with several plugins already like syntax highlighting and auto suggestions. So this video is going to take care of the basic installation. Let's get going. So we are here on KDE and again we are going to install this time the fish shell. So the fish stands for friendly interactive shell and it's intended to be a user friendly shell. Now it's worth mentioning that the fish shell is intentionally not fully POSIX compliant. Now what is POSIX you might ask? So POSIX stands for Portable Operating System Interface and it's a family of standards specified by the IEEE Computer Society for maintaining compatibility between operating systems. The POSIX defines the Application Programming Interface or API along with command line shells and utility interface for software compatibility with variants of Unix and other operating systems. So this is important to know because you have to decide later whether you want to use FISH on a whole system or use FISH as an interactive shell. Because using it as a whole system shell, it means you're going to have to probably rewrite many of your scripts or at least adapt them. So if you're trying out FISH for the first time, we will go this time for the second method, which is going to use FISH as an interactive shell. Anyway, enough talking, let's go ahead and install the packages we need. So let's open up the terminal which is opening up, of course, in Bash. And I'm assuming that you are on Arch Linux here. If you are on another distribution, you will have to find the packages for your distribution. For Arch Linux, the packages I want to install right now are these ones. So let's type in sudo pacman-s. The first package is fish. The second package is pkg file, which is a package used for the command not found hook. So this includes basically a command not found hook that will automatically search the official repository when entering an unrecognized command. So it's good to have it and it just install it at the beginning so you don't have to do it later. I'm gonna install also some fonts and another package which I know I will need anyway later when I will install the my fish framework. So the first font I wanna install is ttf deja vu and I'm gonna install also the powerline dash fonts. And the last package I want to install is the inet utils. And this is because the inet utils package contains the hostname command, which many fish teams actually are using. So without this package, those teams are not going to work. And then we can just hit enter, enter our sudo password and hit enter and proceed with the installation by hitting enter. It's going to take a second to do that. There you go. So we can clean up the terminal and now we can define fish as an interactive shell in our system. To do this, we need to edit our bash rc file. So to do this, we can type in vim and then dot bash rc and hit enter. And I'll scroll down here to the end of the file and insert a new line. And the command is exec fish. Then we can save the file and exit vim. We can close once the terminal or we could source also the bash rc file, then reopen the terminal and we are presented now with the fish shell. Now let's try to type it in something. So let me try again to update my packages. So I'll type in sudo. You can see I have two things happening already. The fish shell comes already pre-installed with syntax highlighting and auto suggestions, which were two plugins that we had to install manually in the Z shell. So for example, if I type only the S here is not recognized as a command, but as I type in the U as super user and then do O for sudo, it's recognized as a command. Now let's delete this and try to go to a directory to see the syntax highlighting. So let's type in CD and then slash Etsy. You see the underline, it works exactly the same like in the Z shell, meaning we are on the right path. And then let's go to the default directory with a typo. So let's type in DEFU and you can see it tells us that this directory is not existing. So I correct this with the A and hit tab to autocomplete and hit enter. And now we are in the default directory. So let's go back to the home directory here and let's clean up the terminal. Now the configuration file for the fish shell, it's under this directory. So let's go in there. Let's type in CD slash user slash share slash fish and hit enter. And let's type in LS and hit enter. 
And as you can see here, we have the config.fish file. This is the configuration file for the fish shell. So what I would normally do here, I would probably copy this file into our home directory and then .config directory slash fish directory to have the copy there. However, this time it's going to be a little different, at least for me, because as I tried also when installing the oh my fish framework, if I copy this file over, once I install Teams, it's going to create conflicts and the fish shell is going to end up in a loop that needs to be corrected afterwards. So that means we can create actually a second config.fish shell in our home directory. And in that config.fish shell, I'm just going to use my personal commands and leave it in the default configuration of the fish shell in this directory. So let me go back to the home directory and let's type in vim.config slash fish slash config dot fish and hit enter. And let's say we want to have NeoFetch, for example, running when we open the terminal. So we can enter insert mode here in vim and type in NeoFetch. And then we can save the file and exit vim. Of course, we need to also install NeoFetch. So let's type in sudo pacman dash s and then neofetch and hit enter enter our sudo password and proceed with the installation now let's close the terminal and reopen it and as you can see it opens up neofetch fine because it's in my personal configuration file but everything else it's still working correctly so let me remove neofetch for now i will enable it anyway again later but to show you the configuration file for the fish shell i need to take it out otherwise it's gonna mess up a little bit how it looks like so let me edit again my personal configuration file here by auto-completing and deleting this line and save the file in exit vim. There you go. Clean up the terminal. Now, to configure the fish shell, we have a very simple configuration tool, which is going to do it in our browser. So to do this, we can type in fish underscore config and hit enter. It's going to open up a browser and your configuration is going to be done basically here in the browser. So we have several tabs here that we can choose from and we can configure colors, prompt functions, and so on. So let's have a quick look at them. So the first tab here, you can define the colors of your fish shell. Now let's not forget, these are not the colors of the terminal. You can still change also your terminal theme. This is the theme of the shell itself. So let's say, for example, I want to choose this tomorrow night theme. And if you like this theme, you can click here, set theme. You can also change the background color. But we can also customize this further. Let's click on customize. So here we get the choice, for example, of customizing our commands. So if you don't want to have the commands in purple, we can change color of these. So let's say we want to have this in yellow. So I'm going to click the yellow color here and go to the next parameter, which is the parameters itself. If you don't want to have this color, you can choose another one. I'm going to leave this as it is and move down to the quotes. For the quotes, I'm going to choose this pink here. And also for the redirections, I'm going to choose this orange. Errors with this color are fine for me. The last thing I want to change is the comments. So I'm going to click this comment and go for green. Auto suggestions are fine for me. And I want to set this theme. So I'll just click here, set theme. And the theme is now set in my fish shell. Now let's move over to the prompt. Now this is the prompt we have right now. And we can choose between many other prompts already available to us. So let's see, for example, we can choose another one here. I'm going to choose this Turler prompt here. So I'm just going to click this and click set prompt. Now let's have a look at the functions. These functions are already available to us in the system. And between these, there are also many aliases. I'm going to show you these in a second. But for example, let's click on one of these. Let's click on LA. And if we, if we look at what it does, this is basically a shortcut or an alias listing the contents of the directory, including hidden files in a directory using the long format. So it's really a nice function to have, and it's already configured for us. We can also create our own, and I'll show you this in a second. Then we can also see the variables available to us in the shell and the history, the bindings, and also the abbreviations. You can have a look at these for yourself and see what interests you if you want to learn more about also the key bindings. Now we can close this tab and type Q here and hit enter, and we can clean up the terminal. Now you can see we have already there our new prompt and the color schemes should be also already working. So let's clean this up. Now, as I showed you before, let's type in, in here LA. We are in my home directory and hit enter. 
This is basically doing a long listing of my home directory because we have an alias for that. Now, if we want to create an alias for yourself, we can also do that. So for example, let's say I want to create an alias or a shortcut to go to my fish directory into my home directory. So to do this, we can type in alias dash s and then the shortcut we want to use. In my case, I'm going to choose CFH. So change to the fish home directory and then double quote and the command you want to use. So in my case, it's CD slash home slash hermano slash dot config slash fish and then close the double quote and hit enter. Now we need to close the shell once and reopen it for the changes to take effect. And now if we type in CFH, we are going to go immediately to the fish directory in my home directory, as you can see there. So if I type in now PWD for print work directory, you can see this is my fish directory. Now, if you're going to look again in our configuration file by typing in fish underscore config and go to the functions tab, we can see here we have our CFH shortcut that we just created. And this is going to be stored in a personal directory. So in my home directory under the functions directory in the fish directory. And this is basically telling that this function, so CFH, is going to run this command. Now, if you want to get rid of this, it's fairly simple. We just need to go into this directory here and remove the CFH.fish function. So let's do that very quick. Let's type in Q and hit enter. We are already in the fish directory here, so we can go into the functions directory by typing in CD and then functions. Type in LS. And you can see we have there our CFH.fish. So we can remove this by typing in RM and then CFH and then with autocomplete and hit enter. And now we can close the terminal and reopen it. And now if we type in CFH, as you can see, the function is not anymore working and we have an unknown command. The next thing I would like to show you is that actually Fish can generate auto-completions also for the man pages. So if you're working a lot in the terminal, this might be very handy. Now, to generate this, we need to type in Fish underscore update underscore and then completions, which is already there, and hit enter. So it's going to take a moment to do this, but it's fairly quick anyway. There you go. And now we have also auto completions for the man pages. So this is going to do it for this basic installation of the fish shell. As you can see, it's really user friendly. It has already several plugins available to you once you install the shell. In the next tutorial, we are going to look at how to install the Oh My Fish framework, where we will be able to customize the fish shell even further. So this is going to do it for the basic installation of the fish shell. In the next video, we are going to expand its customization by installing the Oh My Fish framework. I hope you liked the video guys, if you did please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already, subs always helps us out. And if you want to support the channel you can do so by visiting our Patreon website or you can donate via PayPal to our website as well. Thank you so much for watching this video guys and I'll see you very soon in the next one.